Okay, so um, Hushan asked me to, uh, well, let me back up a second. My name is John Del Senor. I'm the chief architect of Total View. I don't normally do training or or presentation, so please forgive me if I uh, go too fast or go too slow. Um, so uh, Wusan had asked me to do um, uh, talk a little bit about uh, OpenMP debugging. Um, TotalView has explicit support for OpenMP, and it lets you debug um, at the source level um, in your OpenMP code, which can be written in C, C++, and Fortran. Um, you can do kind of what you'd expect, uh, which would be to uh, set a breakpoint inside of a parallel or task region, um, view your OpenMP uh, variables if they're shared, private, or, or um, thread private. Uh, TotalView also supports uh, debugging inside of OpenMP target regions. Um, and those can be offloaded to either NVIDIA GPUs uh, or AMD GPUs. And um, when your region is offloaded to a GPU, it's very similar to if you're debugging um, code that you'd written in CUDA or HIP. And in fact, in many ways, the debugger doesn't really um, realize the difference between code that was placed there because of open uh, on the GPU because of OpenMP or or whatever language. It just knows that. Uh, there's code running on the GPU that it needs to debug. So the experience is very uh, is very similar, and the way you debug these applications are, is very similar. Um, one of the things coming in the next release um, is a result of a um, Coral 2 project. This is in collaboration with uh, Livermore and HPE and and a few other folks. Um, and what we uh, what we plan to do is really um, focus on a handful of compilers that were uh, were Coral 2 compilers, and that includes Clang, AMD Clang, and Flang, and the uh, HPE CC compilers. I believe NERSC uses the uh, CCE compilers. Um, um, and what we want to do is evaluate the quality of the dwarf, dwarf debug information that was produced by the compiler. We want to add some uh, OpenMP specific views that allow you to display the uh, runtime state of um, of uh, OpenMP regions, OpenMP threads, the control variables, and the ICVs. Um, we have support for transforming the OpenMP thread stack, which will allow you to filter out OpenMP runtime frames. It annotates uh, frames that are associated with um, uh, uh, parallel and task regions, and it inserts in the stack backtrace um, links to um, uh, to the encountering thread of a uh, uh, of a generating region. Um, and then the other another part is that uh, we will demangle the OpenMP um, outline function names. I'll, I'll go into more detail about all of these in a second. Um, so when you're debugging an OpenMP application, you just basically use normal debugging techniques for any multi-threaded program, whether it was written in pthreads or some other threading discipline, all of the all of the techniques that um, you would use um, also apply to OpenMP. One thing that I've found personally very uh, useful is to create what we call stop thread breakpoints inside of parallel regions. Since we know that all the parallel regions are um, are going to be executing uh, all of the threads are going to be executing the body of the parallel region at the some uh, at the same time. It's very helpful to get all of the threads into the parallel region and have them have them stop and then be able to um, <clears throat> single step single step them um, as a team and so forth. Um, you can use all of the thread level execution controls that TotalView supports. Um, we've got full support for array synchronous thread control. So you can hold and unhold thread. You can single step either an individual thread or a group of threads. Um, things that you that are different about OpenMP applications is that um, the parallel and task regions are turned into what they call outline functions in the compiler. So when the compiler sees one of these regions, 
um, it will it will take the entire body of the region, pull it out into its own function, and then that function is called indirectly through the runtime library. And I'll show you more, more detail about that in a minute. Um, the same with uh, target regions that are offloaded to the GPU. Again, the region is a chunk of code that's compiled for uh, for the GPU and the normal uh, the normal debugging techniques for um, quiet this up um, the normal debugging techniques for uh, uh, CUDA and HIP apply there. So if you know how to debug CUDA, then uh, then you know how to debug. Uh, a target uh, a target region that's been offloaded to a GPU. Um, one caveat is that all of the nice features that OMPD, which is the uh, debugging interface, was part of OpenMP5. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, that's not available uh, for GPUs, and the reason is is that none of the none of the libraries uh, implementations have um, either from NVIDIA or um, or AMD have supported OMPD on the GPUs. Maybe that'll come in the future at some point. Okay. Um, so to enable um, OMPD support, um, there's a number of different ways of doing it. And really depending on how you, uh, how you start your program, whether or not it's uh, MPI um, really kind of dictates how you want to enable it. Um, the OpenMP spec states that um, OpenMP debugging is enabled by setting an environment variable. Um, it's called OMP under debug. You set it to the word enabled. Anything else you set it to doesn't work. If you set it to one, if you set it to, you know, uh, any other value, it won't work. It has to be the word enabled. Um, if you've got an MPI and an open MP code, then you really have to set it by hand yourself before you start the application. Um, and you want to use like S run, uh, you want to use S run or something to propagate, uh, to actually propagate the setting. If you've got a, a non MPI code and you're going to launch the application under the control of the debugger, then you can just uh, enable it using the, um, enable OpenMP debugging menu item in the user interface. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that the set of compilers, um, really the project is focused on uh, Clang 15, HPE CCE 17, and AMD Clang and Flang. Um, although we have tested the Intel compiler, um, that seems to do a reasonable job. Um, although even all of these implement the o o OMPD implementation is still maturing for all of the compilers. And so we'll have uh, we'll have all of that information in our documentation. And um, and then special linking rules apply. You can't just flip the switch and expect it to work. Um, we're working with all of the uh, the uh, compiler vendors to try to make this work as smoothly as possible. Um, so here's an example um, OpenMP debugging session. Um, this particular one uh, uh, uses AMD Clang. Um, and the thing that we've discovered is uh, LLVM Clang works, but it has some issues. It has some bugs. It's a little weird when you're trying to link things. Um, HPE CCE works and actually works pretty well. Although it's OMPD library when it returns information about uh, parallel and task regions um, is a little bit broken. So that causes, you know, if total view gets bad information from OMPD, it just displays what it finds that OMPD returns. Um, again, we're working with HPE to uh, to fix these bugs. I think they're supposed to be fixed in uh, CCE 18, but I don't have access to that yet. Uh, and when we get access to it, we will uh, uh, we'll test it out. Um, GCC, G4TRAN, OpenMP debugging actually works pretty well. Um, although, and I think they support OMPD. It wasn't included as part of the, uh, um, the project. Um, and so we haven't tested it. Um, one of the, one of the clues here is that, uh, like I said, if you're, if you're debugging OpenMP, you kind of want to 
you kind of want to use take advantage of the stop thread breakpoints because you want to get uh, execution lined up all lined up at the same spot inside a parallel region or if you have task regions you can set a stop thread breakpoint inside of a task region and that'll allow the rest of the uh the threads to progress to do whatever it is that you know whatever work has been doled out um one uh, one thing you got to be aware of is to make sure that you stop the whole process um when uh when you're gathering uh open mp information so if you have a stop thread breakpoint and some of the threads are running the open mp information or the uh, ompd information uh, the information in this pane might be inconsistent so you want to hit the uh hit the halt button up here and and the displays will uh, will update and show you the consistent state of the open mp runtime library um, so here's some of the features. I'm just going to talk about these briefly. Um, the user interface inside the uh, OpenMP tab, uh, tab has a uh, has a region subtab, and what that shows is an aggregated view of all of the OpenMP threads um, in your program. And so, if this is an MPI program that has uh, um, processes, multiple processes with multiple threads. This gives a completely aggregated view in, across the entire group. Um, there are two. There are two regions. Um, there's um, it, it breaks it out into um, here are all your parallel regions, and so you can see in this particular program there was one parallel region um, at line twenty six, and uh, and then it breaks out all the task regions, and these are both implicit task regions. Um, every parallel region has an implicit task region associated with it. So here at line 26, this is impl implicit task region. And then in the application itself creates two explicit tasks, one at line 32 and one at line 34. So you can see the um, structure of the, um, of the regions in the application. Um, there's a, another view in the, uh, again, in the OpenMP view, there's a subtab called uh, called threads. And this is really a threads oriented view of all the OpenMP threads and uh, in the process. So this is just, you focus on one process and it expands, it gives you information, uh, details about, uh, about that specific process. Um, it shows the, uh, for example, this line here shows the current state and then it shows um, the nest of generating task regions um, for that thread. So it basically uses OMPD to unwind the stack of, uh, of regions and it displays all that information. So the columns, uh, this is the debugger ID, this is the OpenMP thread number. You get the, um, we, we can see that thread one is in work parallel state and thread, uh, thread two, I'm sorry, OpenMP thread zero is in work parallel state. OpenMP thread one is in weight barrier. So they're in different states. Um, and we can see that uh, here uh, it doesn't, it's not blocked in a mutex, for example. And the flags give you information about, is it an implicit versus an explicit task? Is the thread currently in an active parallel region uh, uh, for that? specific region uh, uh, and is it a final task region? Again, this is all information that comes out of OMPD. And then finally, um, you get information about um, uh, the task. So you get the name of the function that um, the outline function name and you get the name, you get the uh, source line number. You can also get information about uh, the runtime frames, but that I haven't shown that here. And totally view uses that internally to annotate the stack, but uh, it may it's probably something a typical user is not interested in. Um, another feature is to be able to show ICVs. So ICVs are are internal control variables, and they basically, if you go read the OpenMP spec, there's uh, many many pages of ICVs, and the spec is often described in. Uh, in terms of um, ICVs, um, the each ICV has a scope that's defined by uh, OpenMP. What TotalView does is for uh, for uh, each process, 
it will show um, it will show um, it, in a hierarchy. It will show here are all the global and address space scoped ICVs. So we, here we can see all of the um, all of the ICVs that um, this LLVM implementation uh, defined. Then we can get thread scope variables. So these are all um, these are all threads. So in this particular one, that zero thread num var ICV zero that is its open NP thread number. Um, and then there are other variables that show um, various internal state. Um, this is useful mostly for uh, OpenMP and debugger developers who want to get down to the nitty gritty about exactly what's going on internally um, in the runtime library. Um, as I mentioned, we do, um, uh, TotalView does um, stack transformations. So really a stack transformation um, is three separate actions. Um, one is to filter out open MP runtime frames. Over here, over here you can see, here's the original untransformed, unfiltered, and you've got all of this runtime, open MP runtime, anything that starts with uh, KMP is part of the, uh, it's part of the LLVM uh, runtime. Um, so when you, Click the little icon here, you get filtering and it filters out all of these runtime frames. Um, and what gets left behind are things that are relevant to the application. Um, if it, when it finds a frame that's associated with a particular either parallel region or task region, it'll add an annotation. So it'll tell you uh, pragma OMP task um, and then gives you the task function name. And then the final thing it'll do is it'll insert um, a parent thread link that you can click on and it will focus. And so uh, it'll focus on that thread. So if I were to click here, I would be brought to thread 1.4 in its stack frame. And that's the thread that, um, that um, generated this, uh, um, this particular region. Okay. Um, there's some caveats. Again, the uh, OMPD is kind of is is still kind of new. It's not fully matured, um, and we're trying to you know we're trying to uh, improve the um, um, the state of the compilers and the state of the uh, state of the runtime library. So um, I would say anything that's Clang, LLVM based, they do not do a good job at generating uh, dwarf debug information currently. Um, there's a number of problems. Uh, uh, program variables inside of uh, parallel and task regions, they're all marked artificial, which is supposed to be a clue to the debugger that you're not supposed to show them because it's a compiler artificial variable. Uh, and, but that means that you can also not see the program variables, which is not good. So there's an option in total view. You give it dash compiler vars to display, to display um, the artificial variables, but then all of the compiler generated variables are also displayed. So you get, you know, it's, it's either feast or famine. You either get a bunch of variables and program variables are mixed in and you've got a bunch of compiler generated variables you don't or you may not care about. Um, so again, we're trying to trying to get the LLVM folks to uh, to fix that. Um, we noticed that the uh, parallel for loop variables, you know, the looping uh, looping construct, the the um, induction variable, doesn't have correct values. Um, and then there are other there are other problems. So we're trying to work through these as best we can. The, uh, we did find that GNU kind of in general does a better job at uh, generating debug information, but unfortunately, um, you know, we really haven't tested uh, the GNU OMPD implementation. And again, another caveat is that the uh, 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 that linking, uh, building your application in such a way um, is uh, uh, varies by compilers, and they don't make it easy. So there was a question I just saw pop up. Yeah, so if you don't set the environment variable, then um, it's likely that OMPD is either going to give you incomplete um, 
uh, or, or no information at all. So for example, uh, if you don't have the environment variable set in your application, then you won't get any stack filtering or you won't be able to fetch the ICVs or the thread information may be missing or incomplete. It's really up to the, uh, up to the implementation to, to decide how much of the interface it wants to support if the environment variable isn't set. The spec says, if the user sets the environment variable, then you're supposed to provide all of the information um, in the interface. And we've found that that's pretty much true in, uh, in several of the um, uh, OMPD library implementations, but it's not universally true. We've also seen, uh, for example, uh, older versions of uh, CCE, um, it doesn't know how to tell us the information that we need. Oops, let me go back uh, to um, to put the um, to know whether or not a, a, a region is a, a final task or not. So your experience may uh, may vary depending on all these factors. Okay, any questions with OpenMP before I move on to GPUs? There is one more question. Uh, this is about the iFort, the Intel compiler. iFort? Um, yeah. I would say in terms of debug information, that's a good question. We didn't really, um, we didn't really study the debug information there. Um, I would have to, you know, we'd have to go off and um, and and do that. We I looked at I four just briefly enough to uh, to determine that yeah, it does a it does a reasonable job, although it's not as thorough as LLVM um, in terms of its own PD support. Um, although I would say I four probably has pretty good Fortran debug information support as compared to. For example, LLVM Flang, which uh, has practically no debug information at this uh, at this point, um, the AMD Flang compiler is Flang Classic, and that has that has pretty good debug information, although it's not perfect. Um, um, and then you know we've seen other other Fortran compilers uh, do a better job. I'm not sure if you guys are Fortran programmers or not, but we do have a lot of Fortran. Uh, uh, people using Fortran and the quality of the debug information varies pretty, pretty widely depending on which compiler you use. Okay, okay. Um, so let's see, uh, debugging NVIDIA GPUs in CUDA with TotalView. Um, so TotalView supported, has supported NVIDIA GPUs for many, many years. Um, Currently, you know, basically going all the way back to Tesla and CUDA, I don't know, CUDA two point something. Um, so it's probably been 15 years plus or minus uh, uh, a bit. We still, we, we support whatever cards the CUDA debug API supports. So depending on what version of uh, the CUDA SDK you have, um, we'll support anywhere from Tesla all the way up to Hopper. Um, and right now, CUDA 12 is the latest um, is the is the latest release. If you're on a system with older versions of CUDA, TotalView still attempts to support all the way back to CUDA 9.2. Um, we support OpenACC for both the NVIDIA and the Cray compilers. And what I can say about ACC, uh, OpenACC, is that it's really more um, from the debugger's perspective, it's more of, um, it, it looks just like a CUDA application. In fact, total of you doesn't know um, whether the GPU code was either generated um, by CUDA or by OpenMP or by OpenACC. It just knows, well, there's some CUDA program and then it uses the, um, uses the dwarf information in order to display the internal state. Um, uh, of the uh, you know the state of the GPU program variables and things like that. The thing that we found I found with OpenACC is that um, is that it's just like debugging a piece of CUDA code. So um, it's really not that much different. It it OpenACC is I'd say more syntactic sugar um, 
than uh, th than anything substance. OpenCL, on the other hand, there's a lot of language semantics for OpenCL, and we don't have any explicit support for OpenCL at the moment. Um, we would have to teach uh, uh, teach the debugger a little bit more about uh, OpenCL. Some of the features and capabilities for uh, debugging GPUs, uh, we support dynamic parallelism. You can have a MPI uh, application that uses uh, um, that uses the GPUs, and we support that. Um, we've got uh, flexible display and navigation, which means that um, you can either navigate through the GPU uh, by physical coordinates, which uh, for NVIDIA would be um, device, SM, warp, and lane. So it's uh, like a little cursor that you move around in the uh, on the device to focus on different things or in the uh, uh, logical space, which is uh, either a grid index or a block index. We have support for um, uh, memory, uh, different memory spaces or video uh, calls them uh, like storage classes, and that's all expressed through the type system. Um, and then we've got a, um, we've got a special uh, display and user interface that I can show you that has um, GPU um, status view. It provides um, kind of like a little relation uh, interface to a relational database where you can uh, query the state of, uh, of the GPU and you can kind of slice and dice the data however you like to. There's a lot of flexibility there. This is a feature that was um, implemented in collaboration with uh, Lawrence Livermore. They're looking for a way of getting a big picture view. You can say, you know, focus down to a single GPU or you can uh, do it across an MPI application. So basically all of the GPUs, um, all of the GPUs in your MPI application and all the information is aggregated and displayed. Okay. Um, Total views CUDA debugging model. Uh, this is interesting from the standpoint of the uh, so you've got, you know, you've got your typical uh, uh, process. Um, you've got a Linux address space. It's got some P threads running around in it. Um, it uh, associated with the Linux address space. There's some executables and shared libraries. But you also have this other, this, this other things here on the side, these, uh, these CUDA devices. Um, they've got their own list of images, um, ELF images and executable. And what TotalView does is it unifies this view. So as far as a user is concerned, when you're planning a breakpoint on a source line, if that source line exists in both the Linux side and the GPU side, um, that's one breakpoint and it gets applied to both sides. So that's, why, that's what we mean by, by unified. Um, everything that's in the uh, everything that's in the process, whether it's on the GPU or whether it's on uh, in the on the Linux on the CPU side, is treated as being um, uh, uh, joined together, like they're they're related. Um, there's a memory hierarchy. I don't want to go into too much detail, but this kind of shows through the interface. The memory hierarchy for GPUs against some some place, uh, some things call them address spaces, some things call them storage classes. It depends on the on, on what you look at. But basically the basic hierarchy is you've got thread local um, storage, uh, like local memory and registers, you've got shared memory, uh, you've got global memory, and then there is special uh, that kind of breaks down into um, texture and constant memory and so forth. So most of the most of the um, GPU codes, um, HPC GPU codes, really use global, shared, uh, and local, and then things like constant and texture memory are really uh, for image processing. And then, of course, there's the um, the host memory that's on the CPU side. Now, the reason that's interesting is that you'll see variables in your program that have these annotations. So, um, and that, uh, those um, 
type, uh, those, those tokens are types. And so you can have, for example, a pointer to generic memory versus a pointer to local memory. The internal representation of, uh, of those pointers are fundamentally different. Like a local pointer is only 32 bits wide, whereas a, um, whereas a, uh, uh, a generic pointer is 64 bits wide. So you'll see that in, a, in, the, in the demo that I give. Um, Total View supports, uh, you know, single stepping um, uh, within the GPU. Uh, some things to be aware of, warps advance synchronously. So a warp is made up of 32 lanes. They all share a PC. And when you set a breakpoint, they all hit the, they all, all 32 lanes in the warp um, hit the PC at the same time. Um, although it's a little different when you're single stepping, um, all of the all of the threads in the GPU, um, all, all GPU threads in the same warp uh, advance, except for when you hit a, uh, a sync threads, it behaves a little different. I don't want to go into too much detail uh, about all the bullets in the blue here, but um, if you're really um, if you're really debugging um, GPU code, it'd be good to review. Um, exactly how uh, how this stuff works if you're interested in stepping around. So compiling for CUDA code, um, really the thing that you need to know is you want to give it dash little dash little g and dash capital G. And the little g says, give me debug information for the CPU side and the big G gives it, says, give me debug information um, for the GPU side. If you don't put the big capital G on it, you won't get any debug information uh, on the CUDA side and you'll be rever you know, reverted to uh, debugging at the machine level, which is exactly no fun on a GPU. So uh, you do want to do have the uh, source level stuff. Um, yeah, so if you're compiling for a particular GPU architecture, you can avoid jitting the code from PTX by specifying what what the architecture is. So for example, these are just examples. So for example, on Ampere, it's called compute level 80. And if you tell if you tell uh, at compile time to generate code for compute 80, what that does is it saves, the CUDA device driver works because when it starts up, looks at the GPU, says the GPU compute level is, is 80, and then it goes sniffing around inside the L file looking for uh, code that was compiled for compute 80. If it finds it, it uses it, and that's very quick. If it doesn't find it, then it goes and finds the PTX and it generates the code on the fly. Um, from the PTX. So this is usually just saves a little time at runtime. And if you've got more than one architecture, here is an example down here of Fermi and Tesla, you can you can give it, uh, you can tell it both, uh, compile for both Fermi and, uh, and for Tesla and your executable will be a little bit bigger, but it will run on uh, more GPUs without having to JIT the code. Um, to start a total view session with CUDA, um, really all you have to do is just treat it like a regular, uh, a regular program. Total view figures out that CUDA is installed on the system, um, and uh, yeah, so it's just as simple as uh, just as simple as starting uh, total view. In this particular case, there's a little test program called uh, CUDA Matmol. So here's a here's an example. Um, this is CUDA Matmol. You'll see uh, uh, the source view will open. Well, I gotta get, I gotta get rid of this thing. Um, and you can see here, it's a mixture of, uh, of device code and CPU code. Okay, so setting a breakpoint in uh, in CUDA is is fairly simple. You can see here this is an actual CUDA kernel, 
Um, and none of the line numbers here are bold. A bold line number means, oh, I found source line information somewhere for this source line. Um, and really what you wanna do when you're in CUDA code is you can just come to the, one of these source lines and click on it and that will set a breakpoint. And the CUDA code is always dynamically generated as if this um, is loaded at runtime. All of the GPU code is loaded at runtime. So to set a breakpoint, you just find a line here, uh, click on it and that'll set a breakpoint um, in the GPU code at the point where it's loaded at runtime, okay? Um, so when uh, total view here, you can see the line numbers got filled in. So from the previous screen, now we have some bold line numbers. This is the compiler told us, uh, or the dwarf information told us where the line numbers were. Um, and when the kernel, when the kernel was loaded onto the device, we were able to read all the debug information. Um, and again, this is kind of normal. You'd see this on the CPU side where Here's your PC arrow. You've got a breakpoint at line 91, and um, and you would stop execution here. Um, we can look at some of the local variables here. We can see that uh, matrix uh, this these matrix arguments A, B, and C they're all in local storage, and that's where the annotation comes in. So the address of this thing is in local storage. The way total view um, numbers uh, CUDA threads is it gives them a negative number. Now, a debugger thread uh, in uh, in total view corresponds to the entire device. So when you see a thread one dot negative one here, what that means is that's a specific device. Um, there are ways to navigate around within that device. I can show you that shortly, but that's what that means. So this particular program was run on a system that had one GPU. Um, any thread number that's positive is on the CPU side or on the host side. Okay. And these are the um, logical, uh, these are the toolbars for um, for navigating around in the GPU. Again, you can either navigate around uh, in the logical space or you can navigate around in the physical space. Uh, display, I'll, I'll, do the, I'll do a little more of this in the, in the demo. Um, you can, uh, again, you can single step off, uh, you can single step through the code, although there is a caveat just because of the way the debug interface works um, the, the CUDA, the CUDA debug interface, it's pretty slow to step through and it's faster if you just set a breakpoint and continue, like if you know where you want to stop, um, or you can, uh, you can select the line and, and hit run to, and that, that just sets a temporary breakpoint, uh, and runs to that point. Um, yeah, for, for whatever reason, the, uh, we found that, um, Single stepping on NVIDIA is pretty slow. Single stepping on Rockham uh, with the AMD GPUs is pretty fast. It's just the difference in the uh, in the implementations. Um, there's a GPU status view display. And what that does is it uh, displays the state of all the GPUs being debugged. Um, the display is fully configurable. You can uh, decide how you want to aggregate, sort, and filter based on either physical or logical attributes of the GPU. This gives you like the bird's eyes view of what is going on in uh, across all of the GPUs um, in my program. Um, sometimes it's hard, you know, when you're in the debugger and you're focused on a particular uh, a particular line of code, it's it's hard to get the big picture. The GPU status view gives you a big picture and it gives you controls for um, th that allow you to decide how you want to slice and dice that. Uh, CUDA memory debugging, never mind. Uh, they uh, the, the, they remove that in CUDA 12. And since you guys get CUDA 12, um, that feature has been moved to um, um, that feature has been moved to um, uh, what compute. 
compute checker. Um, there's, there's a separate application that um, NVIDIA has that that um, has the CUDA memory debugging or the memcheck stuff moved into it. Okay, so let me see if I can do a demo here. I'm going to have to stop share. Oh, let me see. Oh, maybe not. Let me see if I can find the... Uh... Oh, look at that. Lovely. Okay, so um, as Wusan said, um, the kind of the approved way of uh, accessing uh, NERSC is through no machine. This is uh, this is my no machine window that's inside of the the thing that's kind of steel blue in the background. That's another. Uh, that's another um, VNC desktop. That I don't know the machine somewhere in Virginia, and I'm in Massachusetts. So uh, we've got I got no machine running inside of here. Let's see if I can get an allocation. Um, this is the allocation I usually use. And so I just decided for the demo to, to kind of stick with this because I know it works. Now, one of the things that this particular application requires, um, it's an MPI plus CUDA application. And I, I'm going to use uh, Pragi and VNVIDIA and the CUDA tool, uh, CUDA toolkit and total view modules. So let me just make sure that those are loaded. I already built the application, but this is basically a slightly modified version of the VECAD CUDA program that uh, Wusan gave me um, um, a while ago. I already built it. There's a make file here, but we're going to have to build it again. Um, I got it from the probably Ocris, I guess. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It's not it's my been, work. Yeah. It's, but I changed it. The, I added MPI. <laughs> That's right. It's like fruitcake. People pass it around a lot, you know. So, okay. Um, so uh, I've already got my allocation, which is good. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can, if normally to run this, if I didn't want to run it under the debugger, I can just uh, I can just use S run, let it run. So S run's going to do something. I don't know what it's doing, and then it finally runs. To completion and it's all done. Now to start Total View, um, all you really need to do is to put uh, is to is to put the Total View command um, in front. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this guy. Oops, click the type. I'm not used to click the type desktop. <clears throat> okay, and then let's let it. Let me start up the new user interface. Now, one thing I noticed here is that some, something's not happened. It looks like um, the file systems at NERSC don't support uh, file locking at all. And there's something in, uh, in QT, the, the user interface is written in QT. There's something in QT that's trying to trying to lock files and that seems to not be working. So uh, I don't know. If a well, file problem. locking, if you use it on, on Scratch, lots of uh, it'll work. The home, global home uh, GPFS doesn't support file locking. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. To, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. Okay. So um, yeah, so here's total view. I can just, I guess I can maximize it. Um, and uh, as, as Larry had uh, shown earlier, um, I'm just started total view directly on S run and it's about to launch a parallel application. So when you start on S run, you kind of see this little message. This is part of, uh, this is a file that, that the slurm people, uh, put in place to try to tell you what to do. Um, so you, we can just let it go, hit the go button here and we'll let it run. Now you can see here, S run actually ran pretty quickly. Sometimes. It's quick, sometimes it's slow. I don't know what the problem is. I suppose I should uh, take this up with Wusan to see if we can figure out why sometimes it uh, takes a very long time. But um, in this particular case, we got lucky and it started right away. So one of the questions it asks when Total View notices that the job goes parallel, it says, do you wanna, do you wanna stop the job, right? And the reason to say yes, is that if you wanna set a breakpoint in your MPI code, um, this gives you the opportunity. If you know you either have saved breakpoints or uh, already 
um, then you can just say no. Uh, if you know the application is going to crash, then you know you don't really need to stop it. But in this particular case, I can say yes, and Total View will um, will uh, launch the parallel program. All right. So here in this particular code, I've got. Uh, I've got uh, these processes. I've got eight processes along with the S run process. One thing that's useful is that um, there's a little control here. You can pull up on the configure and you can decide exactly how you want to organize um, the information. Again, this is um, all aggregated information. So if we don't want to, for example, get details on the thread ID, we can clear that. And so if you have a lot of uh, if you have a lot of processes and threads in your application, you probably don't want to see it right down to the thread level and you might want to get a higher level view. But you can uh, reorganize this and it's um, hierarchical in terms of uh, uh, aggregating based on whatever the property is. So it's it's pretty nice when you want to um, organize things so that you can kind of get a bigger picture. But we can put that away for now. Um, and uh, so one of the things you can do in total view, this is, uh, again, this is the um, uh, Wusan's program that I, I I stepped on here a few places to print out extra information. I can just right click here and I can say navigate to the file. And then this gets me to the wrap application. This is all, all this code is in the CPU. Now the kernel itself is actually quite small. This In this particular case, it's a CUDA kernel, but if it's open in P and it's in a target region, it could just as well be a target region. And as the slide showed you, we really don't have any line number information for the body of the, um, of the, body of the CUDA kernel. But all you need to do to set a breakpoint is click the line. So if I wanna stop here at line 10, I click the line. Now, the hollow mark that it shows here means that there's no line number there, but but because I know that at runtime, the CUDA kernel is gonna get loaded onto the device and we're gonna read all the debug information. I can, and you know, it, this certainly looks like executable code. Um, it will stop at whatever line um, I plant the breakpoint on. If there's no code there, then it just slides down to the next available line. So for example, if I delete him and I set a breakpoint here, well, it doesn't know any better, but when it's gonna stop, it will stop at line 13 at this if statement. So um, you don't have to be too precise about exactly where you plant the breakpoint, okay? Um, to let the application run, I can just hit go again. It's gonna continue all eight processes, which are then going to um, enter the kernel. You can see here, the uh, now it knows that line 13 uh, has the bug information and give it a second, it will, uh, um, it will refresh. And now we're stopped at line 13 inside the CUDA kernel. This is the point where, uh, for example, we can uh, in the data view, we can put the ID. So this ID is a function um, of block index, which in total view, it just displays it as a variable. So if you want to add it to the data view, you can look at the block index as if it were a structure. And then if we start moving around, um, either through the physical space or the logical space, I can, for example, click, uh, I can click, um, here and we will see thread one, right? So if I add this guy to the data view, expand him, we can see that um, we can see that we change the focus. We're focused on a different lane, which um, is the physical uh, aspect of the GPU, and that is logically thread one in this um, um, in this block. Right. So you can go around and view, like if I click this a uh, few more, you can go in either space. It knows like they're in sync, right? The uh, whatever the focus is, you can either it's the same focus. You're just manipulating it either through um, by virtue of looking at the SM or the warp or the lane 
um, or you can look at it in the six dimensional, you know, kind of CUDA logical, uh, logical space. Your variables are here. So for example, in this particular program, um, in this particular program, we've got uh, variable A, um, he's a pointer. He's a, uh, let's, let's just drag him over here for yucks. Right, so his type says, I am a parameter pointer to a generic float. And if you expand him, um, well, we kind of know he's a, uh, we kind of know he's an array. Um, and the only thing that you really have to do is if you, you want to uh, you double click on the, uh, where is he? You can double click on the type. Well, I know he's a, uh, he's a parameter pointer to an array of, uh, to an array of, uh, oh, it's N, I don't know, let's, let's pick a number like a hundred and you hit enter. Now what it does is it turns the, uh, turns the thing into an array. And now you can see the values in the subarray, which at this point is still all zero. Okay. Um, let's see, what else do we want to cover? Um, there's a I'm feeling like I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go a little quicker. Um, there's a, uh, a GPU um, status view. Um, this actually goes and fetches all of the information, which uh, uh, turns out to be fairly expensive um, from the GPU side. So when we call into the debug API, it takes a while for it to go fetch the uh, uh, fetch the debug information. I'm not sure why this isn't updating here. Here we go. It takes a second. I can pull all of these views. You can pull them out. So let me just pull this out. You can resize the view. And what, it's, what we see here is um, uh, it's an aggregation um, based on the configuration that I have set here. This just happens to be the default aggregation setup, but you can set it up however uh, makes sense to you. So what it's showing you is that we've got, um, in this aggregation, we've got rank zero through rank seven. So that's the eight MPI processes we have. Um, we've got uh, GPU devices zero, one, and two. And um, and then you can look at um, this seems to be for device uh, for device three. So device zero one two don't have anything running on them. Device three has this code running on them, and we can see on that device there's SMs zero through twenty six has uh, thirty two warps, and then there are thirty two lanes in each warp. And the function that every lane it is in is called vec add, which is of course the name of the kernel, and they're all stopped in breakpoint state. Now, the uh, the next SM SM twenty seven, we can see it has warps zero through twenty three. This is why this didn't aggregate was because all of these guys um, the warps are fully occupied, whereas in this particular program, since it's not a multiple of 32, you've got um, you've got um, uh, uh, odd number of warps uh, on the S uh, on the SM. You don't have a fully populated SM. Um, the controls allow you to do, as I said, they allow you to kind of slice and uh, you can just, just you can control how to display it, how to group it, how to sort it. There's filtering options here. So for example, if I wanted to say include uh, and you pick your property, uh, if I want to include uh, SM is equal to, I don't know, let's pick a number 26 and I add it. I can then just say, okay. And what the display will update itself and just show you exactly uh, what's going on on SM 26. Um, across all of the processes and devices. So you can see here exactly, you know, exactly what's happening. Um, you know, this is all fully described in the documentation. Uh, you can, uh, you can play with this. I mean, you can, 
if you're not sure exactly what you want to see or how you want to see it, you can you can pick uh, you can pick an option here and then hit preview. The display will update itself. So, for example, I can get rid of this. I can hit preview. The display will update itself. Again, it takes a second because it's fetching stuff. Um, and then you know you can decide. Well, that's not what I wanted to see. And you can pick something else uh, to display. Like SM type the preview, and then you'll get that. Uh, you'll get that uh, as part of the property. It's thinking hard. Um, and here's the and here's where that um, where that information is displayed. So uh, I think, given that I'm already almost ten minutes over. Do we have any questions? Do we want to save some time for Q&A or did I go too fast? Yeah, so uh, do you have uh, questions or comments? Well, last question I saw was, wasn't this supposed to end roughly now? The answer is yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. So. Yeah, we had uh, we had a few technical issues we had to deal with, so it went a little longer than it should have. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for. I mean, very interesting tutorial here. So probably one thing that we didn't cover is uh, the uh, TV scripting, right? So that is a very interesting feature as well. So you can probably uh, do it yourself, and if you have questions, just let us know, and maybe this can be covered during the uh, office hour session that I mentioned. Right. So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. TV script is useful because you can embed it in your batch scripts and have it watch for particular errors. So, what the way TV script work is, it's really modeled after uh, an event, um, <coughs> event and action. So, when a particular event happens in your program, you can just you can tell the debugger here's here's what action um i want you to perform so it's it's an easy way to if you're for example when i get to uh, a breakpoint in this function i want you to run a, a a heap report um so there's there's a lot of uh a lot of flexibility there you can kind of configure it to do whatever you like that's right i think that this is a really powerful kind of feature i guess yes yeah well it's good if um if you don't have access to um, you don't have access to interactive Internet, mode. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if you, ha or if you have to run in a batch environment, then you get a lot of control. So it basically runs the, runs the uh, debugger uh, and it's all driven through the CLI uh, interpreter using Tickle. So, but you, you can program, you program at a kind of higher, more abstract level and then, TV script takes care of translating that into Tickle for you. You know, uh, a, a great use case for doing things like that is through continuous integration. If you have a continuous integration process and you want to, say, keep track of the high water mark of memory that you're using in, in your in your simulation, you can run that as an automated process. So every time you uh, run through your CI loop, you can run. TV, a TV script job that will record how much memory you're using, how much memory you use that time and report it and maybe make a note if it has gotten drastically higher. Yeah. Right. So I think that we should wrap up and uh, uh, please uh, uh, don't forget to, uh, to, to, to the participate in the survey form so that, I mean, this, this can help us a lot you know, to improve the uh, tutorials here. So anyway, uh, let's thank the, our, our the instructors. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you very much for all the yeah. information. I personally like um, OpenMP with OMPD and, and yes. <laughs> to the yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. very up to date. Thank yeah. you for attendees. And like the sunset survey, please. All right, okay, bye. Thank you all. Bye, all. Bye.